Hello, hackers. Welcome back to the advanced exploitation module. In this video, we're going to be talking about end-to-end -end pwnage of our motivating example, a multi-threaded message storing service that in the last four videos, we have thoroughly owned up. So, status report. We know where the thread specific arena is. Oh, and hold on, I forgot to mark off where libc is. Actually, let's get to that. We know where the thread specific arena is. And we have the following capabilities. We have the tcache per thread struct address disclosure for our thread, for our connection thread that got us this, right? We have an arbitrary read and an arbitrary write that we've gone over previously. So let's make things happen. All right, here's what we're going to do. First, we're going to get all of our knowledge. This is the, the script from the last um, video. You're gonna get all the knowledge we want, um, as much of this, uh, you know, these um, check marks as we can. So let's, let's, let's take a look at what we're able to leak and compute first. So we leaked the per thread struct using that awesome uh, race condition. We used the racing data, or we computed based on that where a pointer to the main arena is stored on the threads metadata, uh, the threads arena metadata, and using our um, race condition in a different way, we got an arbitrary read to leak out the um, uh, main arena address itself. What the hell is this address? Well, this is an address inside libc. Specifically, the main arena metadata is in the BSS segment of libc, which is, of course, a constant offset off of the code, um, the, the, the base of libc, where libc is loaded. Um, let's enable GDB so we can look around. Okay, here we go, here we go. Leak, uh, boom, here it is. All right. This is what we've leaked, okay? Here is here are the mappings. What we leaked is in this um, address, uh, 7F541F8D, 7F541F8DE, DE, perfect, amazing. All right, we can figure out what the distance between that and the base of libc is using subtraction and it is this and it'll always be this so now we know where libc is uh, let's take this off this serves no purpose of course we also um we overrode it with a bbbc but that was just for show so now we know where the libc is The libc base is the main arena address minus that. Amazing. All right. So what else does that tell us? This tells us, first of all, where all of the other libraries are loaded because they're all loaded at these constant offsets of each other, which is great, right? But it also tells us one more interesting thing, actually. It tells us the memory mapping base, the address space layout randomization base, where all the libraries are loaded, but also where all of the um, uh, memory mapped allocations in general uh, are adjacently mapped in, right? And this includes our thread um, data, such as the thread struct now the thread heap has some randomization built in but the thread struct luckily does not if you look at our threads uh, my script makes three connections one two three although we only ever use these two so i don't i don't know why we do the third one but anyways that's fine so here we go threads two uh thread one is the main thread that is sitting there waiting for connections thread two three and four are our awesome um connection handler threads if we switch to thread two and we uh, scroll up. So of course the back try a trace of um, this is our call stack. It's up at, at Voln. Let's go all the way up to Voln. This is our vulnerable function. In here, 
GDB is nice enough to figure out what RBP should be in this function. So we can actually examine it at RBP plus eight is going to be the return address into handle connection. And then of course, that's where the thread will will exit. But if we can override this address, then we've hijacked control flow. Luckily, that address is a constant offset off of libc. And it's that 4138. So we even know where the stored rip address for thread one is it's at libc base minus x4138. Just by leaking libc. So now let's say we leaked or we computed the libc base. I like to keep track of what I've computed and what I've leaked. It's nice for teaching, but it's also nice um, to uh, quickly understand if you have a com computation that's wrong based on the previous leak or you have a leak that's wrong. All right, libc based stored RIP address. And of course, if we run, we can get this. We can get actually one more thing. You notice at this stored RIP address, is an address into our binary. So now we can even get the PIE base using our arbitrary read again, of course. Um, the adder in binary is somewhere in handle connection. We read out the stored RIP address. And we can, of course, calculate the base of the binary by taking this and subtracting that. That's 17F into the binary. Now we can even say uh, binary base okay so now we can print more stuff and we know basically everything at this point okay leak and computed Okay, let's disable GDB and run. Up oh, the initial leak failed. What's going on here? Okay, we just got unlucky several times, I think. All right, check this out. We leaked the main arena address. We've done this a million times now. Based off that, we computed the libc base. This looks pretty pretty good uh, in the sense that it ends in 000. And of course, we read out our own map so we can actually confirm that it does match. Based on that, we figured out where the stored um, um, instruction pointer is, where the return address is stored on the thread stack. This is an address into the thread stack. We leaked that out to figure out an address in the binary in the, the return address into the handle connection function. And based on that, we figured out where the binary base is. Again, rule of thumb, when your calculations are correct, you'll have a 000 at the base of all pages, right? Of course, this doesn't guarantee that the rest is correct, but at least it's a quick smoke test. All right. Now what? Well, now, uh, guys, we're done. We know where the stack is. We know where the return address is. For example, we don't know the um, canary. We could, we have an arbitrary read. The canary is uh, 16 bytes before this address. No, before this address. But we don't even need to. We can overwrite directly from the return address. And we have an arbitrary write that will allow us to do that. Right? So this is incredible. Um, let's, uh, of course, now. Actually, let's do a quick status check. You know a lot of stuff. Right? What's the plan now? Um, 
we are here. We're going to do this. We can either leave the canary and overflow the whole stack. As a reminder, there's an overflow right here in this uh, input scanf, but that's that's too much work. We're just going to override the return address directly with a little wrap chain, as I said. So let's do it. All right. Here we go. We are going to print. Let's roll. Okay. It's important to for your exploits to have some personality. You can even do this. That's pretty good. All right. Oops. Oops. Okay. So we're rolling. Grab the uh, libc instance um, uh, or, or an elf instance from pwn tools representing libc. One thing I'm about to do is use pwn tools to auto generate the ROP chain. Um, wrapping in constrained situations happens, right? But very frequently, once you build up enough primitives, enough knowledge, you can go the easy way, right? Um, in this case, that that is one such case. We're gonna set the libc base. So now, and and uh, very important when you're generating wrap chains with pwn tools, don't forget, or doing anything complicated, don't forget to set your architecture. We haven't done that yet. Um, I'll create a uh, wrap uh, guy, but I, I'm not just gonna create a wrap uh, uh, object with pwn tools. Pwn tools is really nice in that it supports filtering out some characters in your op chain or being careful to make a op chain that doesn't have certain characters in it. One thing we've glossed over in all of this is that we use printf and scanf in the code or the, the, the program uses printf and scanf to read in our, our um, addresses, our all of our, our data. Uh, this is a problem because printf and scanf will stop at white space. So we have to avoid all white space, all spaces. We also have to avoid new lines, carriage returns, carriage returns, and a bunch of other stuff, right? Um, vertical tabs, tabs, etc. cetera. Uh, Pwn tools is really nice is that it, it, in that it lets you do that. Otherwise, you will have to, you know, grep, um, exclude things using grep in your op chain finder. All right. So then we just set that to Pwn Tools and we don't have to think about it. Let's run a quick test. Just exit 42. That'll be our entire ROP chain. And we're gonna write it into our stored rip address over the stack. Boom. And we're basically done. So how do we trigger that? Of course, we terminate the thread. We send quit. So that vuln returns, it'll return to what it thinks would be handle connection, but is actually a ROP chain. Um, and then we're going to wait on this process and print out what it exited with. And this should be 42. All right, let's roll. Uh, we got to close parentheses. All right, let's roll. Computed, computing, leaks, crash. Ah, our arbitrary write assumes an integer input. It is the only place we use it. And scanf, of course, can take an arbitrarily long input or whatever the format string limits us to. So we're actually going to change this to just give a send the value directly. As long as there are no spaces there, we're good to go. All right. I mean, yeah. And there, and and we know there are no spaces because it's that. So instead of sending an uh, passing an integer to our arbitrary write and then encoding it, we're going to or and then uh, packing it uh, in little endian, we're just going to send the bytes directly. All right. Perfect. Hit enter. Okay. Argument out of range because. We fail to leak the per thread struct. It happens. Here we go. All right, let's roll. Boom, boom, boom. Exited 42. We have code execution.
pop chain. We're done. Of course, let's do this uh, rob chain. We're gonna read in to some random temporary data, of course, or value temporary place. Uh, it, hmm. We need the word flag. I wanna smoothly open um, the flag. So we're going to read the word flag from standard in, which we control, but we could use uh, any of the connection um, file descriptors into the libc bss this is just temporary readable writable data for us libc uses it for something but there's a big bss the chances that we'll corrupt something that we need before the end of our exploit is low and we're using the libc functions even though we have libc and there are um syscall gadgets in there we'll just this is much easier pwn tools handles it a lot better all right we'll open that we will uh, send file from the third file descriptor to standard out, except for the third file descriptor is not something that we can assume in very simple programs. It is, but in any complex program, such as this one, which uses a file descriptor to listen for the connection, then uses a file descriptor, um, per connection to actually speak to the, um, uh, the, 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 the client and so forth are, uh, this file descriptor is probably going to be because we open three connections, uh, seven, right? But let's not worry about it. Let's close file descriptor three so that the next, this one that's open is going to be three. So this, with this, we can't, of course, uh, connect again. That's the accept file descriptor, but who cares? All right. And then this should leak us the flag. So let's, instead of p.wait, we'll read all. Here we go. And it's waiting for us to send slash flag. My bad. Here we go. Now we send slash flag that gets read into the BSS and then do open send file exit. Boom. There's our flag. How cool is that? So, um, takeaways here. Once we had arbitrary read and arbitrary write, it was pretty simple to get to game over. Um, but in order to do that, we had to do some sleuthing around memory, right? And, and you will become an expert in sleuthing around memory with these, uh, the challenge problems for this module. Um, and an interesting takeaway is our limited, our, our, our arbitrary write actually had a limit, a limitation. That limitation was very specific. It was, uh, the fact that we could not write white spaces. There's no way. Um, oftentimes you'll be faced with these limitations on arbitrary write or an arbitrary read. Actually our arbitrary read and write also had another limitation in that because we used scanf to read in the address we wanted right here, we also couldn't use any addresses that have any white space characters in the address. <laughs> So if our address had a hex 20 in it, we can't do it. Um, so that's tricky. Uh, uh, what was I? Yeah, so th this happens not rarely in uh, exploitation. You'll have limited capabilities. As you can see, oftentimes these limited capabilities aren't that big a deal. And you can still get the flag. All right. Um, hopefully this was an interesting journey, this, this video series, um, for advanced exploitation culminating in putting it all together here. Um, when you see in the future, an arbitrary read, arbitrary write and a stack address, you know what to do. Good luck.